some pretty deep conversation with Rick Wakeman and John Anderson. Hello, Rick. Hello, John. Super. Uh, super. 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 Marvelous. Well, as you can see, totally immersed in their deep music. So, pressing on, I, I called Rick Wakeman and asked him to tell me about the band. Uh, it's very hard to put into words. In fact, I'm feeling quite miserable. <laughs> <laughs> there he was. I was a little musician at the top rank suite in Watford. <laughs> and this is true. This is gospel truth. And, and the lead singer is best friend with a little chap he called Nick Simper of Deep Purple who were totally unheard of in 1967. So there I was. And I'm being serious actually. You don't believe this do you? And I, I bought shows I bought shows of Deep Purple and I listened to it and I thought <laughs> the telephone ring <laughs> Hello <laughs> John <clears throat> and I thought that um I'd heard some nice albums, and I'd, you know, some of the nice albums, and I didn't, I didn't, didn't like them that much. Original yeah, I didn't like, I didn't like them that much. So it, it, uh, when I heard uh, the shades of Deep Purple, they, tracks like Help and Hush, because I thought they treated Hush beautifully on that on that album. There's suddenly a new treatment for the organist. Some, 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 suddenly somebody was trying something. And, but unfortunately, from there on, I bought the next album and the albums from there on, and I thought they were terrible. No, that's wrong. I didn't think they were terrible. They weren't as good as the Shades of Deep Purple. I mean, I mean that Shades of Deep Purple album was a good album, you know. 11.14 here. The lead singer with the band since its uh, beginnings takes us back to the early days. And I suppose, well, the best way to start in the early days is to ask him when he was born. 94. It only really seems like a second ago. <laughs> it really does. Uh, oh, and it, yeah. I don't know when. Well, could you take us up to... Uh, I know this is a huge... When, when, the, when the band started. Uh, we started in 68, was it 68? Uh, I met Chris in this bar, which I frequ he frequented and I frequented. And uh, I was working there. And... Um, we got together and, and after a couple of days we were writing songs, which was really nice. It's uh, to be able to get together so quickly. And uh, we started to get a band together, borrow some money. Then we started working, doing gigs and things. And so, things started to develop um, musically very well. We got Bill Bruford together. And at that stage it was more, more or less uh, uh, Mabel Greer's toy shop. We hadn't really uh, sort of got a name together. Most of the people that were in the band, along with Chris, had been in this band called Mabel Greer's Toy Shop. But we got Bill in, then we got Tony Kay, and then eventually Peter Banks, and uh, we were uh, like thinking of names for the band. And we had World, Life, and Yes. And uh, Yes became the band. That's how we started. And we started doing a lot of gigs and things, and over, over the the years, you know, we've recorded five albums. Yes, recorded their first album back in 1969 and simply called it after the name of the band, Yes. It was, um, we were very enthusiastic about doing this music we were doing and, and we didn't get kind of, um, the right people around us. We didn't know that you had to have the right people around to make a good record. We just thought, well, an engineer is an engineer, he knows his job, and you expect him to do a good job. And by the time we finished the album, we were a bit demoralized by the lack of uh, attention, the sound that we felt deserved. And it didn't, um, there's, there's so much enthusiasm on the album, I think it comes, I think it comes through. Anyway, um, Survival, I like. Uh, I like a, a lot of the songs, thinking back on it. Yeah, I See You was a great song anyway. And, and we just rummaged around with a, a basic um, kind of uh, beatly feel about it. It was really uh, a beautiful song to play with. And uh, at that time we weren't, we weren't very strong in um, writing a lot of material. We were writing some, but we needed other people's music to create a, a more of a show. And one of the songs they used to create that show and establish the early Yes sound was their version of the Beatles song, Every Little Thing. It's 11.20. Some of his more red-faced moments. Yeah, well, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Notice the confidence I get from the rest of the band. <laughs> I had a really hard time 
for about the first four tours. It was it was sort of fifty percent equipment and fifty percent me. Cause I used to get paranoid if things went wrong. I, ne I never. It never occurred to me that perhaps somebody out there didn't know that something was, wasn't working so I could play it on something else. And I used to get really paranoid. I used to freak out. I used to go, oh no, nothing's working. Oh my God, it's all out of tune. Which is really the, totally the wrong attitude. Uh, but thanks to say, thanks to Bex, which I take twice daily. No, seriously, it's, it's all now, it's come together. And I sorted myself out and the equipment's all sorted out. I've got, I couldn't, I couldn't wish for any better equipment than I've got. Uh, it's, uh, it's really good. I used to, we used to have terrible. But I, I remember the Festival Hall concert in London when I did my my solo. I used to chop around the keyboards. Do you remember that, John? Where everything everything broke. And I started on I started on the the piano and the piano mics weren't working. So I thought, never mind. I'll go into the Mellotron and Moog. And the Mellotron and Moog, they were both hopelessly out of tune. And uh, but you have the problem then that you can tune one up to the other one, but you don't know which one is the one that's out of tune. So I, I thought, well, I'll take a chance. I, it's, the, it's the Mellotron that's out of tune, because it nearly always was. So I tuned up the Mellotron to the moo while I was playing away, which must have sounded diabolical. <laughs> when I played the note on the organ, and I played the organ and moo together, I found out that, as it happened, it was the moo that was out of tune. I said, oh, it was the moo and an organ. And then, it's really funny, all the little springs on the organ broke, and all the keys started popping up. And it, <laughs> and it was like, I kept looking at these little keys popping up in the air. It was terrible, and I couldn't believe it, so I stopped. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it stopped around about the same time it normally fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> 28 to 12 here on 2SM with David Watt with, yes, I thought I'd bring together the stars of our show, Rick and John, uh, or if you prefer, John and Rick. Hello, Rick. Hello, John. Hello, Rick. Hello, Rick. Hello, John. Super, 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 super. marvellous. Super, super. Uh, uh, thank you, team. Now, let's get on with the show. Uh, whose idea was it to write your current hit from Close to the Edge? And you and I. Uh, the theme actually is Bill's and, and Chris's. Bill had a theme, which he'd played about the three tours previous on the piano. Uh, awkward, yeah, it's, it's quite funny. All drummers seem to, seem to be able to play the piano quite well. We've had some sort of. I mean, Alan can play the piano quite quite well. Uh, it was Bill had this theme which he used to play, and uh, we rehearsed it in was it Frieda? What's her name? Billing Una Billings Una Billings Dance School. And, uh, name drop for Una there. <laughs> Hi, Una. <laughs> uh, and uh, and it, 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 the the, um, the the sort of the theme was was, was quite strong, uh, but it needed a counter theme. And Chris Chris had come up with a counter theme that went against it over the top, and we worked on that for a long time. And it's and it was a song that. I think John and I a long time ago. Well, I like the whole album very much, yeah. So I've got, I've still got at home a copy tape, which we all have, of uh, the original ending to Siberian Control. <laughs> Do you remember that? The two chords. Oh, no. Well, we finished it, we did the two chords. Remember that, Chris? A chord, a chord a minute long, then changed to another chord another minute long. And another minute passed. <laughs> and then another minute. <laughs> Closely followed by... Another minute. Episode nine of Another Minute Past will be shown tomorrow night at a minute past. <laughs> well, as you can see, we didn't get much out of him. So, we went on. Oh, do you, did? Super, 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 super. Uh, just simply that the political situations that are getting uh, exploited, the politics is getting so... More, too much politicians and not enough statesmen. It's all for the wrong things, the wrong ethics of life. You know, it's nothing to do with the general people. It's to do with these people rising for power, to be on a par with other people, to keep up with the Joneses, to be as rich as and as important as. Instead of thinking, well, I'm in a situation where I can help and do things for people. You know, we, we make our music for people. We also happen to be in love with it as well, which is a good thing. And I think if politicians became in love with their gig, which is to organise and help the masses, then they would, you know, there's no love in politics. There's incredible developments happening in the world. I mean, science is marching on and, and slightly disregarding man, you know, just charging away. I mean, if you get right down to the nitty gritty of, of life, and what life is about, it's, it's, uh, 
It's an incredible thing. It's, an, it's a very magical thing. Um, it has a purpose, and that is to defeat, defeat uh, evil, as evil be, you know? Uh, it's a challenge to learn to know what God is, that's all. Very, very, very simple. Okay, gang, that's it, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the show anyway. Thank you very much. It was much. really nice being here. And you have you have been listening to, or you've just missed. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed it. with yes. Yes. Uh, David Boyle of Two SM and Rick and John from Yes hope that you've really enjoyed, or just missed, the exciting <laughs> program that's just gone before you. <laughs> Any final parting words for Sydney, Sanders? Uh, yes. Goodbye, Sydney. <laughs> Bye, George. <laughs> and Arthur. And oh, Sarah. That's probably been said so many times. Yeah, I know.